Hi, my name is Paul Young. I'd like to draw a picture about something that shows the glory of the Lord. Actually, everything God has made shows his wisdom and his power. But some things teach Bible lessons as well. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Now, let me draw a little caterpillar here. It illustrates the new birth. The little caterpillar shows the Lord's glory. Take up infinite wisdom to create every cell and every function in the caterpillar, but you see when it's transformed into a butterfly, it shows the Lord's glory in a new way. Jesus said you must be born again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that the caterpillar is born again, but it is sort of like being born again. And it would be fair to say that when a caterpillar is transformed into a butterfly, it has become a new creature, a new creation. It can do things now that it could not do before. And if somebody's been born again, there'll be a big change. I did not say there ought to be a big change, there will be. That's how you can tell, know if you really know the Lord. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. Now, let's look again at the little caterpillar. When it, it's a caterpillar, it can crawl along in the dust and the dirt and up maybe on a bush or even into a tree, but it cannot fly. But after it is transformed into a butterfly, flying comes naturally. In fact, it comes easily. And before a person has been saved, he cannot please God. The Bible says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. Hebrews eleven six. But then, after we've been born again, it's not so hard to overcome sin. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. It's not so hard to serve Jesus. Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. But before the little caterpillar has been transformed into a butterfly, it cannot fly. It cannot even get a good running start. It might crawl up a tree, crawl out on the end of the branch, and jump off. But I don't care how much it flaps its fat little body, it's not going to fly. It's just going to land with a little thud on the ground below. But then after it's transformed into a butterfly, flying comes easily and naturally. So when I put my trust in Jesus, he gave me power I did not have before. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This is the, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who's he that overcomes? But he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So let me ask you a question. Have you been born again? Have you been transformed into a new creature? Is there any change in the way you live? You know, we all used to lie, and I suppose all of us used to steal. Maybe stuff out of the kitchen mom did not say we could have when we were little. And we were selfish, and, and we hurt others by what we said and what we did. Now, if you've been born again, now we'll start loving. We'll start obeying God. We know we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loves not his brother abides in death. Let me give you an illustration. I talked to a lady. Her name was Nell. She was a pastor's daughter. She worked in the church. She would sing uh, special numbers. But after a while, she realized she was so stubborn, so selfish, she realized she had not even been born again. Even though she was working in the church and, and did, did, did some missionary work. And then she asked, God to do for her what she could not do for herself. 
And then there's a real ch change, a real transformation in Nell. She became thoughtful and loving of others. She was a nurse. Now she became, she'd even go after hours and wait and minister to the patients and help their families. You see, that's an indication she's been transformed, born again. We know we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. Now, as Nell gave her testimony, another fact stood out, and that is, even after she was saved, there needed to be further transformation. But hey, that's true with all of us. In her case, she said, after she was saved, it's true that she became loving and thoughtful of others, but she said her eating was out of control. She said she did not have the self-discipline to exercise properly. And now she began to take care of herself and exercise and practice some self-control. And if you'd have seen her a few years later, you've seen a big change. She looked nicer. She kept her things nicer. The Bible says, let all things be done decently and in order. Hey, kids, what's your room look like right now? The Bible says, let all things be done decently and in order. Here's what I'm trying to show you. Yes, when we got saved, there's a change. There's a transformation. But then there needs to be further change, further transformation. The Bible says, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. Now that's written to Christians, people who've already been born again. There's already been a change, but there needs to be further change. That's true with me, that's true with you. I remember as a young man, I'd been saved for a few years, and I wanted to serve the Lord, and I wanted to tell other people how to be saved. And I knew I ought to. But over and over again at the last minute, I would chicken out. I did not have the boldness I should have. I was just a first-class chicken. But I asked God to give me boldness. And gradually, God answered that prayer. And he can transform. What is it that needs to be transformed? I drew this caterpillar to show that we need, everyone needs to be born again. Jesus said you must be born again. Now let me draw another little caterpillar here, a different kind, to show that even after we've been saved, there needs to be further transformation. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. And now I drew this little caterpillar with all these little prickly things all over it. Have you seen one of those? Just real prickly, bristling. Yeah, have you ever known a Christian? You're pretty sure that person is saved, but it seems like they're always bristling. <laughs> Irritable, grouchy. Uh, some people just have a reputation of being grouchy. You hear about the lady that said uh, to her friend, she said, did you wake up grouchy this morning? Her friend said, goodness no, I let him sleep. Yeah, some of us uh, have a reputation for what our character is like. But Jesus can change that grouchy, irritable attitude or whatever our sin and weakness is. If we submit ourselves to him, he can transform us. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 138, he said, The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. We work on those areas that need to be work on, worked on. Yeah, but the, as we do that, we begin to realize there's some things that are too big for us. And then we trust God to do in us what we cannot do for ourselves. So right after he says, work out your own salvation, he says, for it is God that works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So I've drawn this one caterpillar to show, to illustrate you must be born again. I'm drawing this other caterpillar and this other, other butterfly to illustrate even after we're saved, there needs to be further transformation. I say, what kind of transformation does there need to be in you? Uh, Nell, she said she was sloppy and disorganized. 
her eating was out of control, and she began to correct that with the Lord's help. I told you how I was, how I was uh, a coward and timid, and God gave me boldness. I'm not going to confess all my sins to you, but I, they're in different areas in my life. Jesus has made a transformation. Let me ask this question. God has given some authorities in the world. Have you been rebellious against those authorities? The Bible says, children, obey your parents in all things. Number two, wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as to the Lord in everything. Ephesians chapter 2, 5, verses 22 and 24. Uh, obey those that have the rule over you. That's the pastor, the leaders in the church. Number four, obey the laws. Which ones? 1 Peter 2, 2 13 says, Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Now, here's my question. Have you ever been corrected by one of those authorities? Your parents, your husband, the pastor, or maybe a law officer, and you felt that anger and that rebellion welling up in you? Well, Jesus can change, transform you, and you can overcome that wicked, rebellious attitude. I say wicked because the Bible says rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. You see, in the law of God, in the Old Testament, witchcraft is such a wicked, awful thing. It required the death penalty. Yes, stubbornness is, is as witchcraft. Or maybe the thing that needs to be changed. You're going around down and discouraged. When you could be cheerful and praising God every day. It was a happy day. I'm guessing it was maybe almost 30 years ago. I discovered this. Bible verse. Psalm 90, verse 14. It's a prayer. Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Instead of going around tense and depressed and morose and down, we can be satisfied and cheerful and happy every day. Uh, let me refer again to the little caterpillar. Back before it's transformed, it crawls around on the ground and in the dirt and the mud and the muck. And maybe up into a bush or a tree. But hey, after it's been transformed into a butterfly, it can fly not only among the branches of the trees, it can fly up even among the clouds sometimes. And Jesus can transform that person who's so down and so depressed into a cheerful, happy person Instead of uh, having an attitude that drags others down so that everybody around is in a bad mood, they cheer others up. You know how it is. Some people are always complaining and down, and pretty soon everybody around them is in a bad mood. They just set a bad atmosphere. On the other hand, there are some people who are cheerful. They're happy. They're going through life uh, whistling and humming and uh, cheer, uh, singing praise to God. See, seeing the funny side of life, and pretty soon everybody around them is in a good mood. They just had a good atmosphere. Hey, I want to be that kind of person, and you can be that kind of person. I dare you to make Psalm 90, verse 14, your prayer. Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Now, I say Jesus can transform just, by the way, Jesus is the one who transformed, who made the little caterpillar and transforms it into a butterfly. Jesus created all things, it says in John chapter 1, in Colossians chapter 1, and he's the sustainer of everything. He's the one who made the butterfly, caterpillar, butterfly, he's also one who made us, and he's the one who can transform us to be like we ought to be. Now, how does it happen? How can I be transformed to be the way I ought to be? Well, with the little caterpillar, it crawls out on a stem somewhere, and it f spins a little cocoon, or forms into a chrysalis. And while it's in there, it's really not doing much of anything. But the Lord is making a wonderful transformation in that little caterpillar, and when it comes out a number of days later, it looks so different. It can do things it could never do before. It was there in secret where the Lord made that wonderful transformation. 
And there's a lesson here. Some of the most important things we do and the things we do in secret are those things that make some changes in us outwardly. Now that's true whether it's good or bad. We can think that we, we can commit secret sins and, and still maintain a nice outward appearance. And maybe you can for a while. But just for a while. On the other hand, the Bible says be sure your sin will find you out. On the other hand, those things we do in secret. Jesus said when you pray, go in your room, close the door, pray to your Father in secret. And your Father who is in secret will reward you openly. He said when you fast, do it secretly. Don't let everybody, don't let everybody know you're fasting. He said if you give, you give to the Lord, you give to the help the poor. You don't need to tell everybody. Do it secretly. Uh, when you go in your room and have your time alone with God, and you, we need to do that. It's going to make a transformation. As we begin to get to know God and spend time with Him, after a while, as we see His glory, we will be transformed from one degree of glory to another. It says that in 2 Corinthians 3.18. It says, as we behold His glory, we're transformed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of God. Have you ever seen somebody, a Christian who loves the Lord, and it seems like just about all, all the time they're just glowing. They're so cheerful. They're so loving. They're so thoughtful. I've seen some people like that. Not a whole lot, but I've seen some. And Jesus can transform that person who is down and depressed and selfish into someone who's cheerful and loving and thoughtful. <clears throat> it happens as we get to know the Lord and His mercy and His kindness, and pretty soon others will see the Lord's kindness in us. Let me give you two illustrations. Do you remember Moses? He went up on Mount Sinai, and he was there with God 40 days. God was speaking to him, 40 days alone with God. And then he came down off the mountain, and the people noticed him. His face was glowing. He did not even realize it. In fact, they were so scared, they ran away from him. And so he put a veil over his face, covered his face, so they would not be so afraid, and they'd come and he would talk with them. Now, why was his face shining? Why was the glory of God Coming out from Moses. Well, you see, he'd been seeing God's glory, and now other people are seeing God's glory in him. As we behold his glory, we're transformed into the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. I'll give you another example. Do you remember the apostles? When Jesus was arrested, all the disciples got scared and ran away. Peter denied the Lord, but all of them got scared and ran away. And then, at Pentecost, God's Spirit came down on these men who had showed how weak they were. Now, I say how weak they were. You know and I know there have been a plenty of times when we've been afraid and too cowardly to tell people about Jesus and to take a proper Christian stand. We've been the same way. But they, the, the, the circumstances exposed how weak they were. But now, after Pentecost, they were threatened by the officials. And the officials said, you better not talk about Jesus anymore. And the apostles said, we ought to obey God rather than men. And these officials, they were surprised. And they could see a big change in these guys. They not only saw the change, but they knew what caused the change. The Bible says, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Hey, what was the difference? They had been with Jesus. You know, as I go, travel around preaching in different places, I don't make a big deal about what denomination I came up in or where I, where I studied. You know, I, I got help 
where I studied. It was good. But that's not what I go around crowing about. But I sure would be glad if people could tell I've been with Jesus. What made those weak, cowardly men bold, powerful witnesses? Even their enemies could see it. They could see the change, and they knew what caused the change. They had been with Jesus. My dad used to tell us, dad's in heaven now, but dad used to say, don't cheat on the Lord in the time you spend alone with him in secret with, in his word. He said, if you do, your faith and confidence in God will dissipate. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now let's review. This caterpillar, this butterfly illustrate you must be born again. This caterpillar, this butterfly illustrate that even after you're born again, we need to be transformed. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. And that will happen as we get to know God, spend time alone with him and his word. Let me draw one other butterfly. This little butterfly was a native of England. Scientists tell us that the last ones of this species died out in 1978. 16th now, they say. That reminds me, this butterfly reminds me of another transformation the Lord makes. It is a total, a complete transformation. It is a permanent transformation. And it is a sudden transformation. How would you like to be transformed so that never again Will you ever fall into sin? That can happen. Ow! It'll happen when Jesus comes back. We'll be transformed to be like Jesus. Those temptations that have gotten us down so many times in the past, those weaknesses will be gone forever. They'll be extinct. My sister, my younger sister, said the things she looks forward to most about heaven. There are lots of good things about heaven, but the thing she said she looks forward to most is all the sin, the failure will all be gone behind us. And that's a wonderful thing. Actually, there's two big kinds of changes that will come on each Christian when the Lord Jesus comes back. Change in our body, change in our spirits. Our bodies will be made perfect. All the sickness, all the infirmities, all the pains, gone forever for good. There's a lady we used to, an, we used to visit some older ladies every Sunday afternoon, try to encourage them, cheer them up. But there's one who wasn't really all that old. She's a good deal younger than I am right now. But for, from the time she was just a little girl, she was all, she had a terrible case of arthritis and she was all stooped over. She was just in her early 40s, I think. She had just stooped over all the time. She could not straighten out her stiff little legs. She could not straighten out her arms. Her little hands were in fists all the time. She could not even feed herself. She'd turn her head just a little bit. Someone would have to feed her, put the straw in her mouth so she could drink. If she ever went anywhere, you had to pick her up put her in the wheelchair, wheel her out to the car, pick her up. After you've opened the car door, pick her up, put her in the car, hold up the wheelchair, put it in the back, drive where you're going to go, go open up the back, pick out, take out the wheelchair, unfold it, open the door, pick up little Elizabeth, put her in the wheelchair. Hey, when Jesus comes back, that stiff, little deformed body, will be made perfectly whole, beautiful. She'll be able to run like a rabbit, jump like a deer. Perfect health and happiness forever. And our spirits, no more, no more sin, sinful tendencies in our spirits, will be made perfectly holy and healthy and happy forever when Jesus comes back again. In the book of 1 John chapter 3, 
it mentions all three of these transformations right there in one passage. Let me show you. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. You see, we have been born again. There has been a change. And then it says, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. You see, there will come a time when we will be changed like him, for we shall see him as he is. Then the next part says, and everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. You see, if you are looking forward to being made completely holy at the Lord's return, then you will be purifying yourself now, turning from sin, seeking to please God, live a holy life, living for others, not just yourself, obeying God's commandments. Listen again. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone that has this hope in him purifies himself. Could I ask you two or three questions? When Jesus comes back and suddenly transforms all his people, will you be caught up and transformed there with the other Christians, or will you be left behind? Question number two. Those of you who have been saved, there's, there really has been a change in your life, in your thinking, in the way you live. My question is, what areas in your life still need to be changed? And I think I need to ask another question along with that. Uh, have you been careless about your time alone with God? Too busy to pray. Too busy to enjoy God's word and think it over day by day. Maybe I need to ask one more question. I wonder if there's some of you who are still right here. Never has really been a transformation. What you need to do is right now in a hurry, turn from your way, turn to Jesus for mercy and ask him to do in you what you cannot do for yourself. When, you, when we turn from our way and turn to him and follow him.